What's up, guys? Welcome to this week's version of Beyond the Press. I'm your host, Ron Blossom Game, and today's special guest is NBA champion, former first round pick, Kyle Kuzma. Kyle, thank you for joining us today, brother. No problem. How we doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm actually in Germany, if you haven't if you haven't heard. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't want this to take. I don't want to take too much of your time up, man. I just got a few questions for you. Um, and it's actually pretty unique that I have you on, man. Um, I was thinking back to the workout we had in Philadelphia what, four years ago, and uh, we went. We, you and I went out to dinner before the workout, and we were discussing just you know your concerns, my concerns. Um, people didn't believe in you at that point in, in your career. Um, just looking back on that and obviously the accomplishments that you've had in the NBA and how far you've come as a man, like take me, take me through your journey. Even if, if you want to start the draft process or draft night, like take me through your experience. Um, well, you know, you know, as you know, um, you know, coming into the draft process, I didn't really have, you know, that much credibility. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I had to work out for every team in the league. Um, you know, went through that process and, you know, just, you know, tried my best, you know, um, you know, I was supposedly supposed to be like a, you know, late second round picker undrafted type of guy. So, yeah. um, you know, I really just came in with the mentality of, you know, I have really nothing to lose. And, um, you know, I think having that mentality really helped, you know, propel me to, um, you know, have, have a pretty good start to my career and, um, you know, it's going to help continue that too. Absolutely, man. Like, I, I think people, people fail when we talk about the draft yeah. process, man, people fail to understand like how crazy it is, man. Like you said, you worked out for every team in the NBA. Like you only have a window of like three to four weeks to do that, man. So you're traveling so much and you're worried right. about performing at a high level with every place, man. I, I, it's extremely, extremely tough, man. Um, but even like fast forwarding that to, to draft night, obviously you were a first round pick. Things worked out for you very, very well. Um, did you end up going to the draft? Uh, no, no, I didn't go to the draft because I didn't know if I was going to be picked or not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, I was just at home. I had like 80, 85 people um, at mm-hmm. a super small house um, and, you know, kind of just watched the draft. And, you know, I remember just watching the draft and I was kind of really cool and chill. And then, like, when I knew my agent um, at the time told me what my my range was, mm-hmm. um, you know, like the first, you know, 22 picks, I was like, you know, I'm not going top 22 right. it's all good you know what i'm saying and then right. you know it got closer to you know some teams that i really knew that kind of liked me and i did well mm-hmm. and um you know that's when like the nerves started kicking in and uh you know people people in the party they knew where i was going before i actually knew because um you know everybody just started gathering around watching the team right. so um i didn't i still didn't know at that point but uh, you know when it happened it was crazy it was just like I don't know. It was a crazy feeling. It was like kind of the same type of feeling when you win a championship. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, man. People people don't understand. Also, man, like through the whole draft process. Like for me, I, I worked out for I think eleven teams my year. Actually, we were the same year, so that year I worked out for eleven yeah. teams. And uh, like the draft didn't start for me until thirty seven. Like I didn't have interest until thirty seven. So right when when you work out, say you work out for five teams, and one one team has thirty two, and one team has thirty eight, and one team has thirty nine. Like the odds are a team that you didn't work out for is probably not going to pick you. So like you're sitting there right. like, man, like these opportunities are keep passing by. You keep getting nervous. Cause I, I went to draft night, bro. Like I was in New York and obviously yeah, yeah. I, I was the 59th pick. And in that, in that moment, man, it was nerve wracking, man. Like it was, it was crazy. So yeah, for it's, sure, it's, it's, it's interesting that, you know, you and I have definitely, we, we joined the, the, the journey at the same time. And obviously you've had a different NBA experience than I have and also a different draft experience, but for me, just being able to talk to you now is, is very interesting to see, you know, the, the growth and development you've made as a player and as a person. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate so, you know, that, I, bro. Appreciate yeah, that. I, definitely, I definitely applaud that, man. Um, so, past the draft, uh, let's go to your rookie year, man. What, what was most exciting about that year for you? Uh, just being in the NBA, you know, I think, um, you know, that, that was obviously a lifelong dream. And, you know, for me, mm-hmm. uh, being able to, um, you know, just live out my dream and, and you know, compete at a high level and compete against greater players that I've always watched growing up. And also, you know, people, you know, in my draft class and, um, you know, just being around that NBA style environment. And I think that was mm-hmm. my favorite part because, um, you know, I, I'm just really big into like the little things in life. So, um, right. you know, that's just something I really like cherish, you know what I mean? So, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna lie, man. Like you, you surprised me a lot. Your, your even even now, but you surprised me a lot. Your first year, like you had an unbelievable year, bro. Like, wh- what do you attribute yeah, that to? You think that, that was just like, you think that was just situation and fit, or you like, was it your work ethic? Obviously, maybe a combination of both. But let me like, what, what do you think it was? Uh, I think it was. I think it was really everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it was. You know, obviously, situation and fit. I think it was. Um, you know, Luke Walton. He really allowed me to. Um, you know, just play and, you know, the type of roster that we had was a bunch of young guys and we were all just trying to prove ourselves. So, right. um, you know, I think it was definitely a little bit of both, but also like for me, I just, you know, like I said, I, I had nothing to lose. Like I wasn't supposed to be drafted, wasn't supposed to be in the NBA. Um, you know, everybody told me to go back to college and, you know, I just, you know, I just came out and I was just like, you know, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You know what I mean? You're going to miss a shot. Right. You're going right. to, you know, miss rotation. I mean, that's not the end of the world. So, um, right. You know, you just, I just always, always keep that mentality. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, there's far worse things in life, and, um, you know, things that really matter. You know, it's just basketball. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake. So, I mean, that's how that's how always been. Mm-hmm. No, that that makes yeah. a lot of sense, man. I mean, it's a place to play, like in LA, man. Like I know there's like a ton of pressure that comes with that, and obviously you've handled it the the best way you could, and you produce at a high level, you know, consistently, like. Did you ever feel like, I guess, like you ever feel that pressure from the fans and the outside media? Um, I, I don't think you really feel it. I just, I think you just see it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's, 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 it's not even just LA. I feel like, you know, in the NBA, um, I would say there's probably like four, maybe about four big markets. You know, you got the New York teams, you got the LA teams. Um, you know, you got Miami, you got Chicago. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, they all they all have big media outlets, and um, you know when you're playing in those type of markets, and we have all those TV games, like you know you're you're going to be uh, seen more, you're going to be talked about more, and you know that's that's a good thing, you know what I mean? So absolutely, um, you know you kind of just you know handle it how you handle it, you know you just have to you know, understand and um, you know know how to navigate things, and um, you know learn from your vets, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you said you guys had a young team that year. Were, were there any yeah. vets that you had to really, you know, pull you under their wing, kind of mentor you a little bit? Uh, oh, for sure. Um, you know, Andrew Bogut, he was one. You know, he went to Utah, so you know, we already mm-hmm. had that little oh, nice. connection. Um, you know, he, he he was actually one of the first people to introduce me to, like, wine and, um, you know, really being <laughs> professional. Um, yeah. You know, Luol Deng. Luol Deng was a very, very good vet for me. Um, you know, he, he's a he's a real estate uh, guru. Uh, so for me, you know, being around him really, you know, sparked my interest in like real estate and, uh, you know, investing and, and all that type of stuff. So, um, you know, Corey Brewer, another dude, you know, I, so many people, Isaiah Thomas, great dude. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to just play with some, you know, some great, you know, all NBA all time players and also just great, great dudes and great vets. So. Right. Right. No. Man, and with that being said, you know, obviously you played with a ton of talent over the last two seasons. Um, like, is is there a season? Like, obviously you could say the, the championship season, but was that your favorite season as a, as a Laker? Would you say? Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, winning championship is everything. Um, you know, it's a great feeling. It's something that like you know you always dream of. Um, you know, as a kid, and you never really realize like. You know, because when we first get into the league and like you're on like losing teams, it's like, you know, you know how, how, how are we going to win a championship? Like, how do you even yeah. win in the NBA? You know, it, it's hard. To, it's hard to win in the NBA. It's hard to win a single game in the NBA, uh, let alone a championship. So, um, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, yeah, you know, it was just, um, you know, it was just, you know, it was just a great feeling, man. It was just something that you just never want to lose in that feeling. So, um, yeah, I, you I know, couldn't imagine. That's definitely my favorite. Yeah, obviously having to like go through the whole COVID situation and because like I was in the G League that year and then the league got shut down and then it was guys had no idea what they were doing. Guys were playing in pro ams and summer leagues and stuff. And then the NBA decided to do the whole bubble thing. And I mean, you right. guys were obviously able to come together and still, you know, win that championship. You know, I know that feeling is something that kids dream about, you know. Um, so, yeah, I know that had to be uh, very, very special. Uh, crazy. Yeah. Um, Okay, a little bit more about the, some of the fun stuff, man. Like, you have any, like, for me, I had an aha moment when I was playing in the NBA. Like, I had a moment where I was like, all right, this isn't, you know, that hard. Like, this isn't, you know, what it seems to be. Like, 
I'm uh, definitely good enough. Like, did you have a moment where it was like, all right, I'm definitely good enough or I'm definitely skilled enough or I can do this for sure? Um, yeah, for sure. I think it was like my third game. My third game mm-hmm. as a pro, I had like 20 points. Um, oh, we wow. played, uh, we played AD, um, played AD and Boogie. That was back when they were teammates together in uh, yep. New Orleans. Those dudes mm-hmm. were like dogs. They were crazy. Yeah. And, um, and I remember my first NBA game and I was like really, really nervous, you know, playing against Blake Griffin and uh, DeAndre Jordan and, um, you know, that, that Clippers team. And, um, you know, I, I think that third game, it just like, it just helped relieve all my tensions. And I was just like, I was good after that. Like I just, I was like hooping cause I was like, yeah, I got this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Confidence, man. C- confidence is, is probably one of the most important things, man. And then, it, it can't waver, especially at that level, man, the highest level. Because I remember, so my third game, man. I obviously I was a two way, I was a two way guy. And for those listening yeah. that don't know what a two way guy is, you spend time in the G League and with the NBA team. So that was me. So I was bouncing back and forth. But I remember my third NBA game. I ended up starting against Washington, and uh, like I didn't play my first two games. I was like coming in the last two minutes of the game. But I actually yeah. started versus Washington, and. Um, I had a stretch where I got switched out on uh, Bradley Bill like two times in a row. And he cooked yep. me like quick, like got me out of there quick. <laughs> and at that moment, I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this, man. Like, I just don't know. But, you know, fortunately, coach coach left me in the game. I, I uh, ended up with like six and six. I had some tip slams. And that was kind of like a moment for me where I was like, all right, you know, I, I can do this. Like, I, it's not it's not that crazy. But, you know, those guys are the most skilled guys in the world. So, like, our whole – when I was in Cleveland, man, our whole thing, when you play against a guy like that who can just score at any level, it's just make it tough for him. You know, just make it tough as have possible. To. And I have to. You know, fans, and like, you know, and people don't really understand that and realize, like, everyone in the NBA is talented. Like, everybody can get a bucket. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, it's like you're playing against the greatest players in the world, you know, every night. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're, like, a two-way player or nothing. Like, you can come in and – you know, let's say like a two way guy and, you know, with NBA guys, like you may not know that two way guy coming in and he might just come in and go off. And you're like, right. Who the hell is that dude? You know what I'm saying? Every, everybody is good, man. Everyone is really good. Everybody. You can, every, you can get cooked everybody. On, any, on any given night, any given night. For man. Sure. So it's like, it, it's really a, a, a no night off type of thing, man. But yeah, I mean, for me, man, but those, those really elite, elite guys, because like I've had to guard, I think I guarded you a little bit when we played you guys in LA for a little bit. It, yeah, with Cleveland, um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've guarded like Giannis and Kawhi and those guys. And it's just like, just make it as hard as possible, man. Like, it, it, it's not much else you can do, you know? Nah, it's, it's not. Nah, definitely not. Do you, you, do you have a guy? Up. Do you have a guy where it was like, uh, like super challenging for you? Super challenging. Um, man. You know, Clay, Clay is, Clay is extremely hard to guard. You know, I think, um, I think with him, like he just moves around so much, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like he's so good with his body and his hands. He he just has like these vet moves that he just knows how to swim off you or push you without nobody seeing it. And you know, he just needs a little bit of space and it's gone. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, you know, I would definitely say like, like a guy like him because like you wouldn't you wouldn't think that because like you know he doesn't have like he's not having the ball in his hands. He's not trying to like you know cross you over and do this and do that. But like he's so cerebral with what he does and um. You know, he's just so talented and gifted at what he does, and he does it so great. Yeah. No, I remember – so my first game was against the Warriors, man, and uh, I think Steph had, like, 40-something on us, man. And yeah. just seeing those guys and, and the way they played the game, bro, it was crazy. Like, we've never seen crazy. anything like that before, man. Like, the best shooters in the world, and obviously having KB put them over the top. Um, Man, it's – yeah, it's, it's really unbelievable what they can do. Different. Different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, next question, man. Uh, the years that LeBron came in, AD came in, championship years. Did you? Was yeah. there any guy that you got really, really close with in particular from those teams? Oh man, you were you were like really, one of the you were like one of the youngest guys on the teams, right? Yeah, no, I was I, I, I was essentially like you know the youngest guy. You know, in that championship year, I was the youngest guy like playing and getting minutes in the rotation. So. You know, I, I got cool with everybody, man. I'm an easy go person. Uh, you know, I don't really. You know, I'm cool with everybody I'm around. I'm just real laid back. So, um, you know, everybody, man, like Bron, you know, obviously AD, um, you know, cool. Um, Rajon Rondo, that's my guy. You know, he's a great dude. It really helped me out so much in my career. And the, um, the two years that I've been teammates with him, 
uh, JaVel McGee were both from Flint. So, you know, we had that connection, uh, got, got close to Danny Green and, and, and Dwight Howard. Um, those are my guys. Um, and even when we had the bubble, you know, J.R. Smith, you know, we used to golf together. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we just, we just had a, such a, like a unique culture, you know what I'm saying? And, like yeah. everybody was cool with everybody. Like everybody knew each other's families. Everybody knew, um, each other's kids. If you had kids. So, um, uh, you know, everyone. That stuff really matters, man. When you're trying to build a successful team, like having your teammates genuinely like each other, that stuff, right. that stuff is like, you, like, you can't, you can't, you can't, can't win. Stuff. Yeah. You can't, can't win, win without it. it. Can't win without it. Sure. Um, but okay, so you said your favorite season was obviously when obviously your highest moment as an NBA player was winning the championship. What's your yeah. uh, what's your lowest moment? Lowest moment? Mm, lowest moment. I don't know. I, I I feel like I've never really had like a low moment. You know what I'm saying? I just like you know obviously like as a pro athlete, um, like you have your highs and lows like individually, collectively. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you have rough games, you have rough uh, stretches, you have rough slumps, you know, that, that's part of the game, you know. Um, you know, I'm just always, like, such a positive, like, optimistic person. So, like, um, you know, what may be a down moment to some person is really not to me just because of, you know, how I'm wired, um, you know, in my mind. But, um, you know, always, you know, you're, you're going to have bad stretches. You're going to have a game for – you know, you score crazy, you have great games defensively, and then, like, the next game, it's like, where the hell did I go? Like, right. what happened? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, that's just, like, the way of, you know, just the way of the NBA and how, you know, when you're when you're young, you, you know, you, you try to figure things out, and uh, it's tough sometimes, but, um, you know, everybody gets through it, and, you know, you just, you know, keep, keep hoping. Would you, would you say that you like develop really, really good habits? Like as a, as a young guy coming into the league, like you don't really know how to really work out and how to get into a routine. And I, for oh, me yeah. personally, for I, sure. I think, yeah, I think habits and it seems like you have very, very good habits and obviously being optimistic and the person you are is going to help you out, not only in basketball, but also in life also. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I'm also a guy that, that's, that's very, very optimistic also. And, you know, obviously my, my journey through basketball hasn't been as fruitful as yours, but you know, I'm still, I'm still on my journey. Uh, right. And I'm still I'm still positive and I'm still happy. And I think that's obviously, you know, getting me through. Um, right. So, no, it's, it's good to hear you say that, man, because like like I said, man, going back to that dinner, bro, like I know you had so many concerns and thoughts and just yeah. seeing where you where you are now. Like you got to have faith and believe because if you don't believe in yourself, man, in this business, nobody. Will. Sure. And, nobody and will. you know, to say that, like, you know, you talk about journeys, like every, everyone's journey is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, like back then I would have never thought I would have this type of, you know, career trajectory so far, you know, just going back of all, you know, those thoughts and doubts, you know what I'm saying? So like, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's all about being optimistic and happy and having habits. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, it's, I'm all about habits. I'm all about like, you know, you know, trying to do the right thing, you know, not just basketball with life because I feel like, you know, that just brings like good juju to you, you know what I'm saying? So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being around the vets I've been around and, and the people I've been around, I've been fortunate enough to think, you know, see how to be, you know, um, the ultimate professional, you know what I'm saying? Take care of your body, you know, being in the gym first, um, you know, handling your business off the court, um, you know, not being in the mix and not being mm-hmm. like, you know, a distraction, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so when you, you know, so when all, you say all, all that stuff matters. When you say like not being in the mix, man, like obviously you're in LA, like I'm obviously you had your fun. Like how, how is it managing that stuff? Uh, I mean, it's easy. You just, you just have your, you know, like, like, for, you know, especially like any city, you know, any big city, you know, it didn't even have to be, be a, city, a big city, you know, a city like Phoenix is fine, you know, a city like yeah. Dallas is fine. And those aren't like huge, huge cities, you know what I'm saying, in the NBA landscape. Um, right. So I just feel like when you're, when you're a pro, you just have to have, um, you know, your morals and values and, and what you believe in and what you think is important, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you know, you're you're a young adult in a city and you, you know, you want to have fun, you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor, but also you have to know, like, you know, what's important to you. And that's your job and, and your craft and what you really love. So, mm-hmm. man, not, not many people understand that, man. Not even, not even the athletes don't understand that. And what I've seen, obviously, in my career so far, it's like uh, I, was, I was drafted by San Antonio and, and they, more than any organization in the NBA, care about like character and the small stuff and do you yeah. show up on time? Do you work hard? Are you willing to listen? Like, what is your image? Like, so many, like, like I said earlier, man, all these players in the NBA are super talented. 
if you're going to be a French guy or a two way guy like me, like you have to be damn near perfect because you're there. There's so many of you. There's so many of you to pick from. So those guys have to be on time all the time. Hard workers, great For teammates, sure. like all have that stuff to. is all that stuff is very, very, very underrated, man. Very. And and all and I mean all that stuff matters. You look at like you know who's out the league right now and who's like not on a team, and you look at that man. like those type of people in your life. You're like, how is he not on a roster? You know what I'm saying? And and then you look at NBA roster and you look at like like damn, why is he on a roster and why he's not? You yep. know what I'm saying? It's yep. like those little things. It's about you know being a good teammate. You know, accepting your role. You know, you may not play at all, but like if you're a good locker room guy, you come in with a smile and you know how to talk and you know shake and bake and. It was mm-hmm. being in the league for 10 years, easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the, that's the thing that people don't understand. You know, everybody wants to be, like, a scorer and everybody wants to be, like, have notoriety. But, like, the ultimate goal is, you know, try to win as much as you can, but also to collect checks. And Man, for sure. Um, you, know, you know, people don't realize that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we only have a, a short time to, like, do this. You know, if, mm-hmm. if you're lucky, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you might play six years. You know, right. if, you, if you're lucky, you might, if you're lucky, you might finish off your rookie contract. You know, that's not guaranteed. So, you know, if anybody's playing 10, 12 years, that's a blessing. Yeah, and they definitely have those characteristics, man. Like, I see – I see, like, I follow Jared Dudley on Twitter, and I know he gets a bunch of hate and stuff on Twitter. Perfect example. Perfect example, though, man. He does all the little things, Perfect. all the right and, things. And, and he's the best, man. He's the best teammate I've ever had in my life. Like, really? He's the best. Like, he, man, he's the best. Like, he helps you out. He, he's, he's a guy that – um you know, he's first one in the gym. He's he's always there. He's working out. He's working as hard as anybody. He's coaching, you know, from 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 the bench. He's yeah. he's helping guys off off the court. He's making sure everyone is is like together. You know what I'm saying? Like and, and people don't understand, like it's hard to do that too. Like that's a big role. Like he <laughs> Absolutely. played a huge role. He played a huge role on our championship team and never even played. Right. Like, right. People don't understand that. Like it's huge. That that stuff that stuff and for a guy that's like later in his career that stuff matters more so than a guy that can come in and get you five a game you know for sure those are th- those are things that you don't you don't find very often on on any team in the NBA really right right man facts yeah but you know I don't want to hold you too much longer I do want to ask you though about you know what's what's coming next for you obviously you've accomplished a lot so yeah. far um you know w- where's your mind at with everything moving forward oh man I'm at peace man I'm 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 very excited you know going to DC, um, you know, a great opportunity for me to, you know, continue to grow and, um, you know, just hone my craft and, and, you know, just keep improving. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. um, I've done a great job over the past four years to improve my game every year, um, you know, in all aspects of the game, you know, not just scoring, but like, you know, being a defender, being a playmaker, a rebounder, like, you know, I'm at a point where I feel like I can just do it all and, you know, I'm excited just to like, you know, do that, you know, in a new system, in a new city and, you know, you know, just make it happen. So that was dope. Are you, uh, where are you, where are you at right now? Are you in LA or are you in Washington? Um, I'm in California, California. I'm in California right oh, now. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. when do you, when do you plan on going out there? Um, I'll call, I'll, like pretty soon, a couple, like next couple of weeks, you know, get out there and, uh, you know, do some team stuff. You know how it goes. So. Yeah. 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 Get out there a little early. Mm. Well, yeah. that's great, man. I'm I'm definitely glad I got a chance to be on here and talk to you, man. I don't want to take too nah, much more appreciate time, it, man. but yeah, I'm very very appreciative of this opportunity, man. I wish you nothing but the best in Washington and nah, thank you, the rest bro. of your career, man. And if I appreciate can show you that. any bit of advice, man, just continue being who you are. Obviously, you know you've done a lot Love. so far, and I've seen you grow so much the last four or five years. And uh, you know, it's definitely it's definitely a good thing to see another guy, another brother, you know, making his way in life. So no, nah, I appreciate thanks, you, man. that, man. Good great uh, good luck in uh, Germany too, man. Keep it going, man. Definitely. Thanks, uh, brother. Great opportunity. And you're looking at it the right way. So that's dope. For real. Absolutely, man. Hopefully I'll play against you again, man. <laughs> you never know. Exactly. So, all right, my all man. Right. Thanks, buddy. Talk to you later.